share the screen because that way I won't forget to do it. But then and what do then, I do? I usually remind you to do that. If you do that, I know, right? I'm, what I'm what do we need you for? <laughs> All right. Well, welcome, everybody. Uh, my name is Brian, and this is Civil Chat. With me is also Brian and Brian. We are the Brian's, I guess you can refer to us that way. Um, but yeah, this is Civil Chat. It looks like we got quite a few new names, which is absolutely awesome. Love seeing all the people showing up today. Um, if you've not been with us for Civil Chat before, uh, this is your chance to ask questions. You ask questions, and we do our best to answer them. So um, try to keep it towards uh, Civil 3D, the infrastructure products in Autodesk. Um, you can ask questions about inroads if you like, but most likely my answer is gonna be, I don't know, All right? Um, so when you do ask a question, please put it into the Q&A. If you put it in the chat, a lot of times it might get lost, whereas in the Q&A, we can actually keep track of what questions we've answered, which ones we haven't. It just makes our lives a lot easier. So make sure you put something in there. If you don't put any questions in there, then this gets to be a very short and boring presentation and uh, we'll go talk about who's voting for who. And um, Oh, and if anybody needs any help with your ballots, let me know, I can tell you who to vote for. So, um, so let's go ahead I and get can't. started. There's too many local things to vote for. So I don't know all the judges in all the counties and all over the country oh, to tell true. them who to that's vote true. for. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I always like to start off with something kind of unique, maybe something you might not have seen before. And we're going to get really basic here. We're going to talk about creating a surface from contours. And you may be thinking to yourself, but Brian, I'm not drawing by hand anymore. Why would I ever need to create a surface using contours? Um, feature lines are great. I absolutely love feature lines. I love using them as break lines in a surface. But the problem is is they are really geared for those grade break locations. And so along a feature line, you have a break in grade, hence why it's called a break line. It's a grade break along the line. And there's some situations where that just doesn't make any sense to do. Um, examples of locations where I would use just drawing my contours would be for those natural type areas where I'm not trying to maintain a specific grade over the entire thing. I'm not trying to make sure that this is flat and I've got a, you know, a channel thaw wig, which is perfectly angled and all this stuff. It, it just needs to be natural. Think of like maybe you're grading a golf course. And this is actually where I first kind of figured out that contours are actually a valid way of grading. Because a lot of times in those natural areas, the slope's going to, you know, maybe I have like a, a, a mound or a berm or something like that. Well, if I'm using the grading tools in Civil 3D, the slopes all the way around it are pretty much going to be the same, and, and I don't necessarily want that. So what I can do is I can draw it as contours. So I don't know. I'm going to draw something in here. Uh, let's see. Let's not use layer zero. Let's use uh, – I think I've got – and it doesn't matter. I'm just going to pick a layer here. All right. And so I'm going to draw in, say, for example, this, is my, this might be like um, – a berm or something and I, I want to kind of berm it up and I'm going to do one foot contours here and so I'll draw in another one and the problem is is if you're drawing contours a lot of times these contours get very jagged right and this is where we can get into some discussion now let's talk about splines for a moment splines are evil and you should never use them I hate splines with a passion. They're just, just horrible. However, polylines can be splined, all right? So before we get into this, let's talk about a little bit about, about the difference between a splined polyline and a spline. spline. All right, so I'm gonna kind of pick the same spots here. Right, and so up top here we have a spline, and down below I have a polyline. And if I double click on a polyline, it brings up the polyline edit command. I don't know if you all know this. And a nice little shortcut you can just double click a polyline, and I'm going to spline the polyline. Okay, now what's the difference between the two? The difference is this top one is a spline, whereas this bottom one is still a polyline, it's just a splined polyline. 
I'm just going to make this a little bit more extreme through here. Mm -hmm. Right. And you can see it's, it's much smoother, but it's still jagged. Whereas a spline is just like perfectly smooth. So if I were to say, for example, I don't know, draw a circle and I were snapped to an endpoint, you can see the spline polyline has several different endpoints along it. And all of these endpoints will end up as points in your surface if I were to add this to my surface. Whereas the spline doesn't. Right, it's got one endpoint way over here on the left and another endpoint way over here on the right. So if you want to try to create something that more natural, use polylines, but spline them. Right, so I sketched I, in I, my polylines. Go ahead. I got a note to that too. If you really wanted to draw an ellipse, there's the PE ellipse system variable too, which will draw an ellipse as a polyline as well. Oh, nice. What was that, PE ellipse? The ellipse, the system variable. That's I one. seriously remember that still from my DOS based days of AutoCAD. Nice. I did not know that one. Thank you, Brian. Learn stuff mm -hmm. new every day so, if you're not careful. Very right. similar to what you're showing, but if you need an ellipse. Let's set, set that to an elevation there, and then we'll set that. Let's see what elevation is that? That is. A 5158, so we'll make this one a 5159. And then we'll draw in another top here and we'll make that one a 5160. And then you can just use the, the MP edit, multiple polyline edit command. I'll select those polylines, convert any lines and arcs. Well, I don't know why it's asking me. I don't have any lines of arcs. And then I can just go ahead and spline them. And there's kind of my berm. And if I want, I can then add this to a surface as contours. All right, so I'll go ahead and do that. I'll go ahead and create a surface here. See prospector surfaces, create surface. Call this the berm. <coughs> we'll go one and five. And then we will add those to, oops. Let me do that real quick. Icons only. Makes my life easier. Not break lines. We're going to do contours in this case. Um, my recommendations, if you're ever adding contour data to a surface, make sure you toggle all four of these options on down here. Uh, you'll just get better results. Trust me. I don't care what the best practices guide that ships with Civil 3D says. Turn them all on. And there is my surface. If I take this into my object viewer. Somebody uh, made a wonderful comment about being at 5,000 elevation. Have some relief to play with. I will say um, right away, as a person that has worked in Breckenridge down to uh, uh, wonderful uh, springs, if you get a bust in your surface, your computer can crash because it's <laughs> trying to go 11,000 different contours. So it's not fun. <laughs> yeah, if I were to, you know, say maybe I wanted to add another little spot over here, we'll go ahead and spline that. All right, and then add that to my surface as a contour. Yikes. All right, you can get lots and lots of contours <laughs> going on there. Yeah, that's exactly what Brian was talking about. Now, I, I, will, I will say that I do kind of like that versus only having like three or four feet of fall because sometimes you can't even see a contour on your site. So it's, right. it's a good give and take. <laughs> yep. Yep. Yeah, I, so, I was once on a site so flat there were zero contour lines. I'm like, okay, let me go add one for every six inches. Still no contour lines. I'd add it for every inch. It was like, okay, there we go. Now there's some contour lines. <laughs> So, so that's kind of the idea behind this. Um, the, the nice thing is, is, you know, these are still just polylines. I, I can grab this, you know, I can adjust it, make the changes to it. And, and as I'm making these changes, the surface updates, it's still a surface. Um, it's just much more natural, free flowing type of a situation. Um, whereas trying to create contours that look like this using break lines, without using them as contours would be extremely difficult to do. So. So I had some things come up and somebody said, okay. why don't you just use the fillet instead of spline? 
That was in the uh, comments in the chat. Wait, so 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 I could do that. So let me draw in. All right. So there's so if I you know use the fillet command, right? We'll do p for uh, let's do r for radius. Let's do I don't know radius something like that, and then we'll do p for polyline. And there it is. I've splined it, so you can see it cuts off all the corners. But the problem is, is when I come in here to make edits to it, I get crap like that. Whereas if I have a spline, I'm you know this is always very very smooth and always kind of um, tangent, so to speak, right? And so for a situation like this. I, I would use a spline rather than just filleting the curves, but that's a great question. So that that's why I would choose this method over just filleting the polyline. And then Tom had said P ellipse is useful for outlining the opening where a CMP or RCP under a driveway daylights into a concrete structure. Yeah, for sure. So I'm not the I'm not the only one who uses the P ellipse command. <laughs> And then, of course, Thomas asked, what is DOS? I know he's being sarcastic because he's, <laughs> he's an old guy like us. So but for those who don't know, it is a disk operating system. That right. was originally before we had Windows and mice. We might have digitizers, depending how old you are. But yes. <laughs> yep. and, he and he also likes to say that, you know what, sea level can have negative elevations. You know, depending on where you are, you might be in Seattle. There are some yeah. negative elevation areas in Seattle. Don't forget about bathymetry as well. So that's generally negative also, unless you're in a high lake. But yeah, Seattle, we get a lot of that. Yeah. I don't know if you guys can hear it. There's a uh, leaf blower right outside my door. So hmm. no, nope. can't hear it at all. Awesome. Good. Good to hear. Okay. So we, we had a great question just pop up about contouring versus brake lining and when to use and what. And why, right? Let's uh, go to that Q and A. Is that in the uh, Q and A or is that? Oh, that might be in the chat. I'm sorry. Okay. Chat. No, that, that's fine. Uh... It's the last one from Chris. Ah, so Chris, Chris asks. So yeah, Chris, this is a perfect example. Put it in the Q and A. Makes it a lot easier for us to manage it. Uh, Chris basically says, "How is adding these as contours different than adding as break lines?" So that, that is a great question. So what's the difference between contours and break lines when it comes to a surface? So you can see in my surface, I have the option to add break lines or I have the option to add contours. They both do the same thing, right? So if I were to add break, so I could do the, get the exact same results. So let me go see to the, uh, let me go ahead and remove these and I'll remove this edit. Or these edits rather. Delete. All right, so my surface is now back to nothing. So when you add contours as a, to your surface, what you'll notice is this weeding factor and this minimize flat areas by option is here. Uh, actually, the weeding factors are in a surface. So let's compare that to break lines. So when I do break lines, the weeding factors and the supplementing factors are optional. All right, so I can choose whether or not I want to weed, and I can choose whether or not I want to supplement. When I add as break as contours, those aren't optional. It will weed and it will supplement. So that's one difference. The other difference is this minimize flat areas by option down below. Right? This is again not optional. I suppose you could make it optional by unchecking all of this. But what this will do, this will add the minimize flat areas edit to your surface. So you can get the exact same results of adding contour data to your surface. So the exact same results as this by adding break lines, right? Toggling this on, making sure these settings are the same, selecting those objects. And you'll notice I get a little funky thing down here. I could then go into my edits and, uh, Minimize flat areas and toggle all four of those on, select OK. And I get the exact same result as if I had added contours. There is no difference here. Now, it's just uh, that add contours gives those as more, op more precise op options, so to speak. They're, they're not as optional. 
but something to think about is a break line is one continuous line that has different elevations assigned to it, where a contour is one continuous line that has one elevation throughout. So this is why there is different selections within whenever you're defining what it is. I also find that sometimes depending on how you add or when you add break lines versus contour lines, some of the triangulation does some funky stuff as well. I hope Brian will get into that. Yeah. And, and so, as Brian said, the, the conceptual difference between a break line and a contour is that a contour is always at the same elevation and a break line doesn't have to be. It can be, but it doesn't have to be. It can vary. But as far as the program goes, it doesn't care. Right? You can have a contour that's at different elevations and, and it works the same as adding a break line and then doing the minimized flat areas. Right. So exactly. programmatically they're the same kind of object, but in our everyday world, they're different, but that's why we have that minimized flat areas. And as Brian was saying, the order that you add this stuff in can be important because of the surface properties. So the surface definition. So if I go to my surface properties here on the definition tab, it keeps a list of everything that it's done. And so you notice when I add it as contours, which I don't think I did this time. I did that as, let's go ahead and, uh, Set this back the way it was. So we'll delete that. We'll delete that. And then we'll just do it as contours. All right. And then we'll go into the surface definite properties, the definition tab. And you can see it said add contour data and then minimize flat area. So it adds this minimize flat areas edit into the surface definition. Now, if I decide, you know, I want another contour over here. And what was that one? That was 5159. So we'll set this one 5159 as well. Uh, let's set this one. Yeah, 5159. Sure, why not? Doesn't really matter for what we're doing. And then I add this as a contour again. What you'll notice in the definition, we added the contours, then we minimized flat areas. Then we added the contours, then we minimized flat areas. Right? You don't need multiple minimized flat areas. Most of the time, you just want your minimized flat areas at the very end. So you add in all your contour data, and then you minimize your flat areas. All right? So I can just either uncheck this, or I can right click on this and remove from definition and then hit OK and rebuild the surface, and I'm happy. And, and you can also spline your polylines after the fact. So if I were like, you know what? Uh, let's see. Let's send that to the back. All right. So I can decurve this and put it back the way it was, and my surface will rebuild to that new location. So it, it's not like it's a new polyline. When you spline it, it edits the polyline. And then your con so you can see I haven't ended the command yet. So you can see that contour out there. And then as soon as I end the command, the surface rebuilds and it updates for me. So it's kind of handy. I, I like this for these types of areas. So another place might be like, hey, I've got a, a parking island and I want to kind of mound up some uh, dirt inside of the parking island. I can use these contours to help model that. And Adam said the only time you don't want to remove those items, I assume he was doing the rebuild flat, if, is if you use non-default settings when you add the contour groups. Uh, right. So if you're changing up the settings of the minimized flat areas for different groups of contours, I, I could see that being um, a situation where you wouldn't want to remove them. Uh, Max asked the question, when making a spline, does it make the surface larger? Uh, yes, it does. So if I if I take this spline, I'm just going to copy it over here. I, and again, this isn't a spline. This is a spline polyline. And I'll copy it over here as well. Right? And I will decurve this one on the left, on the right, leave the one on the left as a spline, and then explode them both. You can see that's all of the data points that are being added to the surface 
versus that. So yeah, you, you get more data in the surface for sure. But if you're drawing contours, it probably won't matter a whole lot because I mean, I create surfaces from point clouds nowadays and those have millions and millions of points in them. Okay, I try to keep them less than a million points, but. <laughs> and Ky Kylie asked, or Kyle, I'm not sure. Which surface is more accurate for QTO purposes? Ones created from two splines or spline polylines? I, I don't think you can add true splines to a surface. I've never actually tried. Oops. Uh, affirmative. I believe I've tried it before and it's... I can't remember what happened. <laughs> It's nice. it's I'm like you, Brian. I, I avoid splines like the plague. Yeah, splines are horrible. Yeah, they're 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 not a good rep representation. Additionally, if you use them, it's hard to uh, get a northing and easting on any particular portion of it. So well, they, my, you can look can, at that. It's gorgeous. Yeah, you can. Well, but my, my problem with my problem with splines good. are every program interprets them differently. Yeah. So if you had a spline in something and you give that to Rhino, you give that to Revit, you give that to any other program, every program interprets splines differently. So what you see in program A is not going to match in any other program. Yeah. So, yeah, you can, Adam. Um, which one makes a more accurate surface? You're drawing with contours. <laughs> It doesn't matter. Contours are probably the least accurate form of data because what's happening between the contours? I don't know. Right? Um, if it looks good, you, you're going to be accurate enough. It, it really doesn't matter if it's a true spline or a spline polyline. Um, my guess is that a true spline will add a lot more data to it. So if we go take a look at the triangles here. This is just my guess here. Uh, change the style, display some triangles. Well, wouldn't the triangles also be representative of that of what your mid orbit's distance would be? Because most of these are arcs or a uh, ever increasing or decreasing radial arc because that's what a spline kind of uh, more is defined. That's a great question. I don't know. Because when you added that, did you change your mid orbit's distance? But if I you re-add that spline... So if you remove the spline and re-add it and give it a mid-ordinance distance as you do and increase mid-ordinance distance, it should increase the triangles. Yeah, because you need more triangles than that. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> well, okay, so the key yeah. point is, is if you're trying to follow and it's a tight radial and you don't have enough mid-ordinance, it's not going to follow the cut. See, there it is. There's yeah. more triangulation. But so it, yeah. it is a mid-ordinance distance based. Yeah, it is. Um, but yeah, Still don't just, like just don't use splines. <laughs> Yeah, just don't use splines. It's just don't. <laughs> well, okay, here's the thing. If you use a spline and you want a four to one uh, slope, can you offset that four to one? Uh, I don't know. I don't think so. I don't. Yeah, offset. Try, to, try to offset that bad boy four feet for a four to one slope. Yeah, you can. But it's not a spline. Uh, it's a weird spline now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I would just be incredibly careful if you're using... Any type of contouring yeah. data. But if we offset a spline, spline, spline. Yeah. Uh, then it's just a polyline. Yeah. So, did it put a curve in there? It did. <laughs> My offset the gap that must be. The spline is a digital French curve. <laughs> well, we're in America. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, that's uh seeing splines mainly used, yeah, for whenever, but see, those are yeah. So what I would do is I would decurve it, load layout, yeah, and then offset it, and then curve both of those. Does but that, if you curve both of those, you get a different offset. Yeah, that's. Well, my offset gap type is exactly. Again, is yeah, stuff. so it's just not a reliable way to get good. Well, for design purposes, obviously. Yeah. I mean, it, so, this is if you've got nothing else to get from like an existing conditions and you've got contours. So for those of you that don't know, when you offset a polyline, you can, there's a three options. One, you can have it put a, a fillet, a curve in there. 
right? So and this is controlled by your offset gap type system variable, right? So if it's set to one, it'll put a curve in there. If it's set to zero, uh, what will it do? It'll just put an angle point in there. And I think chamfer is two. Yeah, so offset gap type of two will chamfer it, which can be a lot of fun because if you continue to offset this, then it chamfers the chamfer and then it chamfers the chamfer that was chamfered. And, and then and you, you get all sorts of fun stuff going on there. All right? So when you're offsetting uh, polyline lines as contours, the offset gap type system variable can come into play. So something to be aware of. And then Simon did ask a question as you're doing all this, is there a list that converts splines to polyline splines? Um, probably. I've never found one because I don't use splines. Um, and Spline never... is, an instant, is an instant pink slip and that person gets fired. <laughs> First, they get one warning, second time they're gone. That's it. Right. It's even yeah, worse than exploding. exploding or... yeah, it's right along with exploding hatch work. Yeah. In dimensions. I thought that was a standard thing to do. Oh my god, dimensions even you don't even get a first warning. <laughs> <laughs> Shots fired. No, yeah. All right. So Nathan had a question uh right, right to the start of this. So we'll jump into Nathan's question. Is there a maximum amount of tool palette groups or palette tabs allowed in civil 3D? Um, not that I'm aware of. I always say possibly no, but you're gonna hit a limitation sometime. Well, yeah, there is there is a limit. Absolutely, there is. I mean, there's only so many atoms in an observable universe, right? right. Um, so yeah, there there is a, a limit. What that limit is, I don't know. I don't know if it's something that's coded into the program or not. Um, if it is, it's not enough. I'm not aware of one. Um, we don't use tool palette groups here at GEI. Uh, we switch paths to our tool palettes in the options. Um, so I don't know about tool palette groups. And if you have more than palettes than there are space to display it on your screen, then it gets really annoying. So I, I wouldn't put more palettes on your tool palettes than can be displayed on the screen. So if you get the little lines down at the bottom and they take you to more tool palettes, like for example, if I bring up the uh uh civil 3d standard corridor ones you know how they're stacked down here and you get additional ones down here um i would try to avoid that as much as you can if you're creating your own custom tool palettes so i i, I don't know the limit cool and then Simon had a follow up. The reason he was asking about the spline command is apparently a lot of adobe illustrator lines will convert to splines when importing their DWG um, exports. Okay. Which makes sense because Adobe Illustrator just gets everything up. Sorry, it just like fonts, text, it's never the same. They all get jacked up. Yeah, you can't yeah. do anything with Illustrator into <laughs> real programs. It looks like Tom put a, a link to a, spline, uh, a list that does that in the chat as well. So for those of you that have joined us live and you can see the chat, there you go. If you're watching on YouTube, go search for spl2pl.lsp. That's a lot of P's and L's and S's. SPL2PL.LSP. Nice. All right. What else we got? All right. So the next question comes in from Chuck. Labeling parcels in an XREF. We have had a lot of problems when with labels disappearing due to the XREF having trouble loading. Is this a known problem? Uh, it's not a problem that I'm aware of. Um, so for those that aren't sure what uh, Chuck is talking about, let me go ahead and try to replicate this. So I'm going to XREF in a drawing that has some parcel in it. So if you don't know, XA is a great shortcut if you have to XREF a drawing because it bypasses the whole XREF manager and just asks you, hey, what drawing do you want to reference in? So let's well, see. that is it bringing in as an attachment or, no, or, or an overlay? Oh, you'll still get that dialog box. Oh, thank you. It just misses, it just bypasses the XREF manager. 
Uh, so you don't have to type XRF, bring up the XRF manager and say, hey, attach a drawing. It's just attach a drawing. Uh, so that would be program files, auto desk, uh, there, civil 3D, E, and no. Help, civil tutorials, drawings, parcels. Let's see, let's bring in that drawing there. So you still get this dialog box. All right, so here's a drawing, it has parcels. It's XREFed in, and now I can label through an XREF. So Chuck, what kind of labels were you putting on? Were you doing line and curve labels? Were you doing area labels? What kind of labeling were you doing, Chuck? All of them. All right, sweet. <laughs> so let me, so you can label through an XREF. So obviously this is an XREF. These are parcels. So if I go to the annotate tab, add labels, uh, parcels, we'll use, I don't know. Um, I still very rarely do parcels anymore. Bearing with distance. That's small. There we go. Right, so you can label through an XREF. Um, the label should persist unless, so if I detach the XREF and then reattach it, the label's gonna go away. Right, so maybe that's what's going on. So if I go into my XREF manager and I detach this XREF, the label goes so, away. Simon and, also had an option saying, um, if another XREF have the same name embedded into the XREF but was unloaded, you may want to go into that XREF and, and set them to overlay. So right. conflicting, hey, I've got XREFs of the same name. I don't know which one to go to. That could be. Um, so you can see if I unload it and reload it, it's or detach it and reattach it, the label's going to go away because the line's no longer there to label. All right, so let's go ahead and label this thing again. Uh, parcel, single segment is fine. Did... I don't want any grades. Ah, that's right, I scrolled up. Uh, we'll just do distance only. Doesn't really matter, All right? So if I were to go in to the XREF, uh, let's actually do an area label as well. So let's, uh, stupid thing, why'd you disappear? Go, you go away, do it this way. Parcel add parcel labels, I'll do an area. I right, so I have an area label there. So if I go in and I edit, open up this XREF, and this is a thing with uh, parcels a lot of times, uh, you have to be careful with them because parcels like to be destroyed and recreated constantly. Right. So if I were to grab this and I were to edit this line, come up here and then snap it back down there and then close the drawing. If you notice, when I pulled this out, that parcel disappeared. There is no longer a parcel being defined in this area. And then when I snap it back, it comes back. So doing things like that, this is now a new parcel. So that old parcel that we're labeling in the XREF is no longer there to label. So if we were to reload this, which I can't because this uh, one of the tutorial drawings and it's right protected, um, it's most likely going to lose its label there because the parcel was destroyed and then recreated. So it, this is actually a new parcel from when I first opened up the drawing. So that might also be something that's going on. You see the same thing, Brian, whenever you're doing, because uh, we use polylines and label polylines for overall lengths of pipes and such if we're not doing 3D piping or just mm -hmm. doing simple line stuff. And if you add a vertice or if you change the polyline in any which way, the portion, the, the label that was associated to that length of line will disappear. Uh, <coughs> so yeah, we, we, we've seen that, but our company exclusively uses labeling through XREFs consistently. And we've been doing that since 2009. And it's been very reliable for us. Do you do that. it through parcels or parcels as well? Parcel, uh, uh, everything except profiles. Okay. 
Yeah, and Kyle Even said he's seen round surfaces, similar. Do you want XREF in the labels for those? No, we do not. Uh, because uh, it, depending on the viewport of where you need to see the view, the uh, contour labeling may or may not appear. So we do all of our labeling within the sheet itself gotcha. via the XREF. Okay, excellent. So Chuck, that's some things to consider as far as why your labels might be disappearing. Uh, parcels are very finicky, for sure. So it might have something to do with that. Uh, might be an unload reload of the XREF because you mentioned it was uh, when the XREF has trouble loading. So maybe somehow it's getting detached and then reattached. I'm, I'm not exactly sure, but those are some things to look for. Uh, what what uh, if they could be a DREF? Uh, you can't data reference parcels. Yeah, I think it was kind of a wish list comment. Well, even, okay, so here's something about dereferencing versus X referencing that we found is if you X ref, if I X ref a drawing, um, let, let's say I've got two files. One of them's got survey, and then I get a new updated survey file. I can bring in the new XREF of the survey file, grab all of the labels that are in my sheet view, and change them to the new file. I believe you can do the same thing with a data reference. But it's uh, first off, it's got to, whenever it's doing the synchronization, it's got to open up that file and synchronize it. And a lot of the times, our surfaces can be upwards of 100,000 megs. So that will sometimes delay and cause uh, uh, delays in our in our CAD for opening. And when you've got multiple hundred sheets, that can really be nasty. So that's one of the primary reasons we went with labeling through an XREF instead of a data reference. Okay, Excellent. just food for thought. All right, what else do we got, Brian? So Kyle has a question. Has anyone used BIM Collaborate with Civil 3D projects in ACC and can, can tell me what it does? No, this is separate from BIM Collaborate Pro, which enables DREFs in ACC. Uh, uh, I have not used BIM Collaborate. Uh, if you're using Civil 3D in the cloud, you're going to need uh, BIM Collaborate Pro if you're going to be using data references. And almost every project that I'm aware of uses a data reference. So can't imagine a time when we wouldn't want to be using BIM Collaborate Pro for an ACC. Um, so we <clears throat> we have about 1,800 projects on ACC currently. Um, a lot of us have Civil 3D, and yes, you have to turn on the uh, collaboration for Civil 3D, which enables the, da the data references. But if you're not using data references and all you're using is CAD, you and even if you're civil 3D, it still is viable. We have many people out there with uh, just basic AutoCAD, like electrical or structural, that can use ACC, which is still through the BIM Collaborate, but it didn't have to have the Pro turned on. Okay. I don't know if that really. I don't know if that really answers it. The, the Collaboration Pro just enables the data reference um, access. Other than that, it's it's nothing more than a, a glorified SharePoint site that allows locking which has been absolutely awesome for our company. Can you use a, a docs license to access files on ACC? I've never tried that. Uh, a what? A, uh, an Autodesk docs license? I, I don't really know. Okay. I believe if you're talking standard AutoCAD, yes, you can use the docs license to open up the AutoCAD files. It's only when you're talking you need to do all the, the um, yeah, and, and the Kyle's agreeing with that, yeah. So yes, the docs license just for like the vanilla regular AutoCAD files, you can open them and do things and work in them. Okay, but yeah. I don't think you need them in Collaborate. That, that, that. That's what I thought. Yeah, I honestly, truth, did not know there was a difference. <laughs> I didn't know there was a difference between BIM Collaborate and Pro. Yeah, all of them will require a desktop connector for that connection point. Yes, but um, right. and yeah, wonderful thing. It's all free. I love it. Hey, Justin, how's it going? Long time no see. All right. So the next question from Chris D. Off topic, what's the best way to share custom point file formats with their custom UDPs between DWGs? Uh, should be able to drag and drop between them, I believe. If I create a, a new drawing here, and we'll go create a user-defined property, we'll create a new one. 
call it, I don't know, a civil chat. And in civil chat, we'll create a new one called size, and it'll be a string that looks good, and default value will be big. I don't know, I'm just making something up here. And we'll go to our point file formats, create a new one. This will be a user point file. We'll call this one CC for civil chat. And then all it's going to be interested in is the big or the size, right? There it is, size. All right, so there's the custom point file format. It's using the size UDP from the civil chat. And then if I come over here to this one and we go to master view, that was drawing three. And we're bringing that point file format in. In this drawing, we now, let's see if it works. Did not bring in that. Did it bring in the point file format? It did bring in the CC. Interesting. And it is blank. All right. Let's delete that. And let's bring in, can you bring in, can you drag that in? Interesting. I figured that would work. Chris is saying that's what he's seeing too. It doesn't bring the UDPs. Interesting. All right. So let's see. Let's save this drawing. I'll just call it uh, UDP. And then we'll create a new drawing and I'll have to save this. I'm gonna try the import styles and settings. See if that does anything. And There's nothing. Is there exactly the same? No, it's just to have the update options, right? Let's do import settings. Point. So it did not come in on the import, but what happens if I do an insert? And we'll do a classic insert because I like that better. Did not come in on an insert either. I, I never tried to do this before, and I, I can't find a way to do it. This seems like an oversight from the development team if this can't be done. Well, it's like we always say, you always have an answer. The answer might be, yeah. Right? All righty. So the answer to that one is, not sure. Yeah. Don't know. Mm -hmm. oh, has and, a and, and that was not off topic it's civil chat it was on topic for sure just because right. it wasn't about what we were talking about earlier doesn't mean you can't ask the question so please keep them coming uh tom just put one up there try bind insert and posted a link okay i got tom doing all my web searches for me thank you tom appreciate it So do we have anything else? Yep. So Carrie asked, does anyone have experience using the control 
profile developed by WizDot for corridor design? I have not. I've never done any work for WizDot. I don't think our company has either, at least not that I'm aware of. Um, I don't even know what the control profile editor does. Um, Edit, edits control profiles. Thank, thank, thank you, Captain Obvious. Mm -hmm. um, I don't have the WizDot stuff installed on this system, so it's not something I can test. Um, so I, I I don't have any experience with it, Carrie. And a uh, civil chatters. Does anybody have any experience with it? Can you put something in the chat, perhaps? Oh, and, uh, and I have a quick crickets. question for y'all since I was talking to everybody, but like I haven't been this whole time. Um, I'm really curious. So does anybody here knew this month because they were at my class at Autodesk University? I'm really curious. If you, if you, you can you just throw in a chat, say, uh, yep, here or something like that. I'd be really Chris, curious. Chris Dahl raised his hand, so I'm assuming he's new. But okay. no. Awesome. Let's see, I see one hand raised. Nice. Either that or everybody else fell asleep. <laughs> I've used F dot before, but I've never used wi Wisconsin. Yeah, I've played around with the F dot two stuff as well yeah, a little I, bit. I hear it's kind of cheesy though. <laughs> oh, sorry, Groner. Yeah, tis the day. Um, we also need to get your uh, YouTube channel there, Mister Haley. Oh, uh, YouTube channel is just do a search on YouTube for uh, Civil 3D Plus. Um, we forget what it is because I find your old one that was like yeah. years ago. Uh, yeah, Civil 3D Plus. If this is, no, nope, that's my personal one. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's what I keep coming up with. Uh, maybe it's C3D Plus. And there you go, C3D plus. Post that in the chat. And for those of you that are watching online at this moment on YouTube, you don't need to know this because you're already here. I'm going and to, I have a playlist for I'm going to answer a question so. and then it'll be in the chat, I think. Shit, I did it wrong. Hate it when you do that. Type answer. Cool. All right. So no one no one uses the WizDot. Yeah. Sorry, Carrie. Um wish I could help, but unfortunately on that question, I'm I'm clueless. And we have 10 minutes left, and this was earlier out i missed it so slacker on my part um about your contours earlier it's just an observation i'm usually telling people that contours are a representation of a surface thanks for letting me see that there is a legitimate case where surfaces can be modeled from contours yeah yeah and, and, and like i said before when i first discovered that i was working with a company that was modeling golf courses and i was telling them i was like oh no you, you need to use brake lines you need to use brake lines and then it dawned on me, it's like, yeah, brake lines don't work for this. They just don't. And that's when I started playing around with the contours and spining them and realized, hey, this actually works. So. And I think the question was on all of your civil chat previous ones, because I posted somebody there, the question was that came up earlier is, do you use um, reference templates? And I was like, I know we've talked about that, at least half a dozen times in civil yeah. chat. Do you like put um, like descriptions of what you talk about in civil chat? Um, I, I have on a few of them, but most of the time I just post them up there. Um, since I'm not yeah. getting paid to I do mean, this, I, did, I just haven't. I try to, but it's been a few months. I'm like, yeah, no. When I do reference radio, it's like, if I do it the day of, I'll put the topics up there because I can right. remember. If it's like three, four, a month, two months later, I'm like, yeah, I have no idea. Yeah, yeah. I, I probably should to make them actually searchable. Um, but that's a a lot that I would have to go through to put the topics and stuff in. 
All right, and that was the last question and we have eight minutes left. Oh, We're Robert, at the bottom Robert. of the hour. So you could talk about reference templates. Well, Robert just minutes. put something in, uh, contours oh. versus grading objects, best use workflow. Um, depends upon the situation. Uh, grading objects are great if you're very straight, if, if it needs to be consistent, right? So again, contours, it's that more organic, free flowing type of a situation. The grading objects, it's very um, structural, so to speak, right? I'm going from here, I'm going up at this slope and I'm tying into that, right? That's when you would use a grading object. Whereas a contours would be, hey, this needs to be like, we want to recreate a natural hillside where you're going to have draws and um, extrusions, or not extrusions, um, things, pieces with the land that jut out and it's flatter and it's steeper and it undulates and things like that. That's when I would use contours. So that's how that goes. Uh, hopefully, hopefully that answers the question, Robert. Uh, again, it, it all depends upon the, the situation. The only time I use contours is when it needs to be more of a uh, free flowing natural type of an area. Other than that, I, I might use contours on occasion just to kind of like smooth out contours, right? So if we come back over here to this drawing, you know, if I have a proposed surface created from great, you know, and I have a, a contour that looks kind of, you know, jaggedy, you know, I, I might, you know, just draw in a polyline line that kind of matches it, spline it, and then add that to my surface as a break line, just to kind of smooth out a oh, contour gosh. that's existing. Uh, I do this primarily for aesthetic purposes. Um, but yeah. I can't show you here because this is a data reference surface, but that's that's the idea. Cool. I think with that, oh, do you use grading optimization in your grading design? Um, I don't do a whole lot of design anymore. And the types of designs that we do really don't lend themselves to the grading optimization. Uh, we do a lot of, you know, like dam work. Um, we do a lot of stream restoration type things. And so it really doesn't lend itself to those types of things. I did attend a class at Autodesk University taught by John Mayo. It was a hands-on lab. So if you are interested in it, go check that out. I know Craig has done a lot of training at uh, Autodesk University as well. Um, check out his classes. Uh, the one done by John this last year was a hands-on lab, so you won't get to watch the presentation, but you should be able to download the handout and the, the uh, data set to check it out. Um, but if I were doing more like site development type stuff, you bet I would be using it for sure. It's not the end all be all, but it'll give you a great place to start your design. Beautiful. All right. Any more questions before we call it a day? Going once, going twice. Well, thank you everyone for showing up today. Really appreciate it. Uh, this has been a great, great group. We had quite a few people in today. That this was awesome. So thank you all for sh showing up. Uh, again, I will be reposting this recording up on my YouTube channel, C3D Plus. Uh, just search for that at YouTube, and we will see you next month. Take care, everybody. Oh, and get out and vote. Get out and vote. <laughs> Thanks, Brian.